Welcome to season five of the Retail Tea Break podcast. My name is Melissa Moore, the Retail Advisor, and each week I'll be joined by industry experts, retailers and brands to dispel the myths, share their knowledge and give you an insight into the retail industry. You can listen back to previous episodes on your favourite podcast platform or on YouTube. And while you're there, please subscribe to the podcast so that you get to listen to it first every week. In the meantime, grab that cup of tea, sit back and listen in to season five of the Retail Tea Break podcast. Today, I'm joined by a guest who is a gift maker and a businesswoman. Having started her career in a very different field, she and her husband realized that they weren't happy in their jobs. They wanted to do something more meaningful, more fulfilling, something that would bring joy to themselves and to others. They wanted to work for themselves and spend more time with their family. So this husband and wife duo launched their brand's website in 2016 and opened their first physical store earlier this year. Maria Porter, one half of Duffy and Porter, welcome to the Retail Tea Break podcast. Thank you so much. You do not know how happy I am to be here. So thank you for having me. <laughs> I'm really excited to have this this conversation because you've had this incredible journey, which we're going to talk a lot more about today. And you've kind of gone about it in a very different way. But again, I think that's going to give a lot of people out there real inspiration. So let's kind of kick off with this initial first question that I that I always ask. In the time that it takes to boil a kettle, which is about two minutes, so I'm told, tell us a bit about you and the business. Okay, well, hello. I am Maria, as you've already said, and I'm one half of Duffy and Porter. Duffy and Porter is a family business run by myself and my husband, Malvin, in Bunclody on the Carlow Wexford border. We would mostly be known for creating beautiful gifts. That is what our passion is, and that is absolutely what we strive to continue to be as we go on. So we would be known quite well for the likes of making our keepsake boxes, our wooden keepsake boxes, and our personalized gifts. We believe that every moment is special. So we believe that the gift that is celebrating that moment needs to be just as special. So basically, that is what we do. As you've mentioned recently, we have opened our own brick and mortar. So we are very excited with that after seven years online. And and as a result of opening that, we've also kind of opened our doors to other makers and to other largely Irish brands as well that we stock in our beautiful gift shop in Bunclody. So in a nutshell, that's us. <laughs> I, lo- I love it. And it's such an exciting story. But I have to jump in and ask, you've not always done this because there's an awful lot of brands and makers out there that that's either what they train to do. It's the passion they've always had and they've just done it. Well, you had the passion, but it's not what you've always done. No, it's not. My degree is actually it's a bachelor in science and food science. So I have an honours degree in food science and spent 12 years working in the FMCG and medical device industries, always working in a quality and a compliance role. So the role that I left in order to start this was actually a quality and environmental manager role in one of the larger multinational fast moving commercial goods businesses in Ireland. When I had our first child, myself and my husband really just decided that there was more to life and that we hadn't got in our in our chosen professions the the spark of joy wasn't there for us anymore and we wanted to realign what we thought was important to us right into our careers and into our family life and so Duffy and Porter started <laughs> and I do you know what and that's the reason I asked that question is because I think there's there's a lot of people out there the last few years and I know you jumped ship before COVID but there's an awful lot of people saying hang on what I do what I trained to do originally is maybe not filling me with joy but I have this creative streak or I have this passion for something else and it's it's incredible that you actually jumped that you took that opportunity and you did it and look it's showing that it's paying you know it's paying off in absolute bucket loads for you which is so so exciting so it's great that you've kind of taken what you knew in the past but you've you've run with it and you've both run with it and I think that's what's so joyous about this story it is a true family business you're both in it but I suppose take us right back to that initial start because yes you've got this really strong online presence you have this physical store now which we'll certainly talk about in a little bit 
but it didn't start like that. So how has the business changed and grown over those years? Oh, okay. So <laughs> if you go back seven years, you would see me oh, with our, our babies and me at the kitchen table with a paintbrush oh. and some wooden shapes and painting them. And I will always remember the first shapes that I had. Those shapes were teacher apples. And there were little tiny little teacher apples that stood on them, stood in a little plinth. And I painted them up and I said, wouldn't it be fabulous if I was able to sell those? So off I went, I painted them up. I put up my, the kitchen table was as it was anyway. <laughs> Young children, it was always full of stuff. So I actually, for the very first time, put out my folding picnic table outside. The weather was good and I sat in the garden happily painting those apples. And I was so happy. And I just knew at that point, I just knew that if I could manage or when I was able to manage to get those to sell and to develop the business, that that is absolutely where I wanted to be. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's such a brilliant story. So there's the start. How have we jumped then from okay. kitchen table, surrounded by babies, as you said, <laughs> with you kind of leisurely, because it sounds really leisurely that you were leisurely painting at that stage because it was still a bit of a hobby. Yeah. Um, what happened after that? Okay, so from there, we, at that time, I wasn't able to get those blanks. I wasn't able to get them in Ireland and I had to import them. They weren't available. So myself and my husband actually decided if we couldn't buy Irish, then we would supply Irish. So we got the machinery together and we started making What you do? Goodness. <laughs> now that's, there, there's a jump. There's a jump. I'm, there's not an awful lot of people listening now that would think I need X, Y, and Z. Sure, I can't buy it in this country. It has to come from abroad. Therefore, do you know what? We'll buy the machinery and we'll make it ourselves. Just like that. <laughs> I'd like to say that it was that easy, but it so wasn't. So we started making the shapes and, and selling them on, which was brilliant. We started, we then ran out of space, obviously, in the kitchen table and Irish weather wasn't letting me paint outside all the time. So a garden room, we built a kind of a garden office and put our machinery and our space in there. And then we developed and the business was getting bigger, thanks be to God. So we built another workshop thinking that we were sorted with this workshop and we were putting it down on the family farm and everything was going to slot into place and Madden was going to be able to do his farming and I was going to be able to then we grew out of that one so we built another workshop <laughs> so we built another workshop and that is now our current workshop and the middle workshop is now our shop so yeah so That's now amazing yeah. <laughs> Shalak, you have to feel the fear and do it anyway. You have to be, you have to trust yourself. You have to know that the idea that you have or the concept that you have or the vision that you have for your business, you absolutely have to know and be fearless in the decisions that you make for it. That yes, this is the decision we are all in. We both left really good full-time jobs. Um, this is the business. This is what feeds the family. This has to, has to work. It has to, do you know, failure is not an option when you've got three children depending on you, do you know? And there's the driver. And I think yeah. that's the driving force, which makes you so strong together, but also in business is that fundamental value that this has to work, but also you've kept pushing forward. I mean, literally, as you've built bigger kind of, you've built bigger sheds, you've built bigger areas to run the business in, but you've, you're really driven and you understand that the two of you have to make this work and you'll do whatever you need to do like buying that initial bit of machinery which most of us would have gone oh she look I can't buy it in Ireland uh, I'll do something else or we'll find something else not many of us have that idea well actually we'll go and make you know buy the machinery to make the goods here and that's so important so that drive that determination the values your fundamental values which I think today is so important to customers but it's not necessarily something a lot of brands, a lot of retailers really believe in. Like they say this, but do they do it? Whereas with you, and I can see it, they're talking to you today. You have this real drive to just keep pushing forward. That's it. Yeah, that's it. This is, we're building, I suppose we're building for our family. We're creating gifts for other people's families. It's important. It's important because these are the special moments and the gifts that we make are the special gifts 
that people will look back on in years to come. Like they will look back at a family tree that was made for them when the last baby was added. They will look back at a picture frame that we put, like I had a beautiful granny in recently who wanted a picture or wanted a gift. She didn't know what she wanted. She wanted a gift for her grandchild on her confirmation day. And she had no idea what to get. So like she actually came into the shop. So we had a lovely chat and she said, I want something for when I'm gone. She was just being, you know, I want her to have something always from this time. So we decided that we would do a frame and on the day she would get a picture taken with her grandchild. And it was a beautiful picture of herself and her grandchild. And she sent that to me and I put that on a beautiful ceramic tile and mounted it in a frame. And that child has that forever. Her, that child loved it so much. Her little sister was making her communion and she asked granny for the exact same thing. Like that, that's what's important about gifts. It's not just that'll do. The gifts that we sell, it's not that'll do. It's this is special. And one thing that I always find, I know I'm going on a little tangent here. No, and do you know what? <laughs> I've got so quiet because for the second time in, you know, in five seasons, I'm welling up here because what you've just yes. described there is this really important emotional connection that genuine retailers have with their customers, which means they will keep coming back or their friends and family will keep coming back. So no, keep going because I just yeah. think this is true retailing. This is, this is what drives me, knowing that this, this is going to be there. So it's not somebody, I don't see a customer coming in or a customer coming on our website as someone that has spent 30 euro. Mm -hmm. That's not what I see. I see a person who may be on 10 euro an hour, maybe earning 10 euro an hour, and they decide to invest three hours of their life, of their working life, their precious time into this gift. So they've spent 30 euro, but they worked three hours to get that. So three hours of their precious time to make this gift. The least I can do is make it perfect. The least I can do is make that gift absolutely what they need it to be and to give them value for money. And it's not value for money that, OK, they give me 30 euro. Here's 30 euro worth of product. That's not it. It's the correct gift for the correct person. If they choose a personalized gift, we've chosen the right words for it. And that is something that will absolutely last and it's going to be there. And it's just, it's just what it's you, all about. But you add that magic. Do you know, there's the added value aspect here. It's this wow factor. It's almost this customer experience and this experiential kind of retail time that we're living in. Duffy Imported delivers it in bucket loads, as you say, because it is this one-to-one -one emotional connection. It isn't just about vlogging goods for the sake of it. We're coming into the golden quarter now. Christmas is upon us. The Irish like to buy and to be honest, buy for the sake of buying because we're very generous as a nation to give to each other. But that's not why people come to you because people come to you because their moments, as you've said, they're creating moments when they give the gift. They're leaving moments with that, you know, the person that's received the gift long after they've gone or long after the celebration or whatever it might be. And that's what makes us special. You have this connection with your customers, but also the people they've given it to. And it just builds this gorgeous longevity, which I actually find really interesting because in the training and the lecturing I deliver, and most people will know this, we talk about this idea of the lifetime value of the customer. So technically over 15 years, you know, whatever they might spend, if you do your grocery shop once a week, how much are you spending over the year? How much would you be spending over kind of 15 years? Really simple. But with Duffy and Porter, it's like at a whole other level, the lifetime value of the customer, because you've got that story of the granny there who's bought things there for the grandkids. So which is gorgeous that they'll have this when she is gone eventually. You know, that that is just the way it goes. But also to turn that on its head, you've got the whole other side. Your lifetime value of the customer literally starts before the baby's born, which is, again, so exciting. Yeah, it is like I am honored and I am genuinely honored in so many ways with this job or with this. I don't wouldn't even call it a job. I get to do this. But anyway, I am so honored. I know the names of babies that have not been born yet. Oh. I've known that people are pregnant before they make their announcement because they send me the scan to make it into a frame or they pop it into a keepsake box. Like 
I know the gender of babies. I I just I've seen brides wedding dresses so that I've been able to design up signage and bits and pieces that's going to suit. I blessed. I, I and that's I, mad because actually whichever way you look at it, either going backwards or forwards, I'm presuming you've had people buy for brides who eventually then might buy for the firstborn and then the it. christening and the confirmation. Yeah, and don't so forget the Christmas Eve so box. Yeah. And of course, the incredible Christmas Eve boxes. So you, yeah. you're you there for all these milestones. And I presume Honored. then, by the emotional connection you've built with that customer originally, they just keep coming back for whatever the occasion is then. They keep coming back, they keep buying for various people. And I presume that trickle-down effect then is how you've built the business. It's Yes, I think I actually, I would have a really wonderful relationship with our followers on Instagram. I just, ah, oh, the crack. I don't even have a personal Instagram account. I just go on to my business account and have the crack. Um, so they're fabulous people. Um, but last night I actually asked them, do you know, I told them that I was doing something today that I was nervous about. And the amount of people that sent me messages of good luck and just kind of going, oh, guys. Um, but on top of that, I asked them how they found us. And a lot of, because I thought it was interesting just to actually know, because I knew we were having this conversation. Um, and a lot of them said that they, some of them found me through scrolling or word of mouth and that type of thing. But some had gotten engagement boxes from us when they got engaged. And then they got wedding boxes. And then the baby arrived and they bought their own, you know, a keepsake box for the baby. I may have done a christening candle for them, you know, in the meantime. It's just, it's, it, it's, it's mad. I actually you know, we do have them and I know it's seven years. So I wouldn't say, you know, that I can tell you, you know, people that I've gone, you know, their whole lives with, but I have done some very important piece, pieces for people that, that found us very initially, very young in their days. And, and, and I'm following through life with them, which is amazing. And it is, and also genuinely quite unusual because yes, we've got the lifetime value of that customer, which for you is only 15 years and we know it'll probably be more, but also the return the returning rate of your customers that they keep coming back to buy and they keep coming to you for these milestone moments is unbelievable like it's far higher than the average retailer out there because of this personal connection which I find fascinating because they do they literally trust you so they're not necessarily even buying off the shelf with you because again because yeah. you have the machinery to do what they want yeah it's truly personal that's not it's absolutely it's Maria I have this idea can you help yeah <laughs> do you know Maria I would like to do something this little bit quirky can you help yeah do you know and it's very special and yes I know you know from a business point of view some of the stuff does need to be off the shelf because you know we're two people and and we, you know obviously the customized pieces do take a lot of time but it's so worth it when you see the, the outcome do you know and when you see that person coming back like they know children by name at this stage you know they even know the dog's name at this stage they're like you know how is such and such and and I'm the same back do you know it's it's very special that's lovely. That's lovely. and talking yeah. of special last Christmas you were telling me that you had this opportunity to have this cabin outside yeah. one of your local stores what did you learn from that actual kind of physical face-to-face -face interaction with your customers that you might not have seen prior to that with online orders or people ringing in Oh, it gave me the bug. Oh, it absolutely gave me the bug. And I do have to, it would be remiss of me not to acknowledge the opportunity that we were given. It was about this time last year and we went to the wonderful O'Reilly family who owns Super Value in Bunclody. Salt of the earth people. We went to them and we, we actually asked, thinking of my lovely folding table that started all those years ago, it was like any chance we could put a table in the foyer for a little while just to, because we were very conscious that we were selling nationwide and we were selling every day nationwide online. However, our neighbors had no idea. They had no idea what we were making. They had no idea, you know, the, the broad range of what we were doing, especially some of our older neighbors and things that wouldn't necessarily be online. They had no clue what was available on their doorstep. So we wanted, we wanted to get into the community. And uh, Joe and David, the two down in Super Value, they're like, come on, no problem at all. And they were like, have whatever. So this idea of a table suddenly evolved into us getting a cabin and putting it outside <laughs> their, their shop. And they had no problem with it. They were like, come on, come on, it'll be fine. It'll be lovely. So we had a cabin for the entire month of December 
outside Super Value in Bunclody. And oh my word, did I love it. The day we were closing, I actually cried. There was a customer standing there and she's like, you okay? I'm like, I can't believe I have to stop doing this now. Do you know, it was the, the personal interaction and even speaking to the people locally and for them to be able to see the quality of the items that we produce, for them to actually be able to touch it and feel it and know that that can be done and for us to be them to be able to stand there and us to personalize bits and pieces while they were waiting. You know, there's decorations on Christmas trees all around this part of the country that never they wouldn't have been there. Only we have the cabin, which is fabulous, but it absolutely gave me the bug. I was able to see the love in people's eyes when they were choosing a gift for somebody. I was able to see those eyes sparkle when they saw the right thing or when they saw a child's name that has a father that they were never able to find in a shop on a decoration. So I'm a Maria. You could always find Marie. You could never find Maria. So I know exactly what they mean. <laughs> Do you know? So for that child, even just their eyes were dancing when they could see their name on a decoration that was going on the tree. And we were able to do that and to be able to see, actually physically see what's happening or how how it affects the people that are buying it and the love that was going into choosing those pieces. It gave me the bug. And so so the shop started there and then, <laughs> you know, then planning it, what we could do, how we could get it to open, you know, what we needed to do. Would we just stock our own products or would we bring in some other Irish brands? What were we going to do? It all started with that cabin. That's was, amazing. But again, yeah. it comes back to this idea of customer centricity. You put the customer at the heart of everything. You personalize for them. You talk to them. You worked with the reaction you got from them. And I mean, look what that's led to. So from a small little cabin, which of course, very grateful for, it gave you that interaction to now having this own, your own shop in many respects, which is gorgeous because as you said, not only are you selling what you do and personalizing what Duffy and Porter do, but you've surrounded it then with these gorgeous Irish products so again we're talking about shopping local whether it was with the grocery store there in Blunt Clothy because people were obviously coming to them and meeting you but of course mm -hmm. now they can come out to you in person and have the chats and shop which is brilliant yeah yeah it's fabulous we wanted to have everything Irish we struggled a little bit with that we couldn't fill the shop quick enough so I would say 90% of our products are Irish and there's some beautiful brands and there's more beautiful Irish brands arriving before Christmas and it's just fabulous. <laughs> and that's, that's brilliant because again, look, we know how important it is to small businesses, excuse me, to small retailers, to so many Irish kind of indigenous brands. And as you said, look, we have to pepper them with a few other bits. And I think that's what makes it a curated kind of store for you yeah. and also exciting for your customer. But yeah, the big lead up now over the next few weeks into Christmas is going to be an exciting one. So in yes. that respect, any tips then from what you've learned over the kind of last six years or so? Any tips for kind of makers of smaller brands who have started off, maybe started off where you are right now listening at the kitchen table? Any tips for them kind of on this route to scaling and branching out? Trust yourself. Trust. Simply yeah. trust yourself. Absolutely trust. Have faith in what you do. Have faith in your ability and trust yourself to be able to bring it to where you want it to be. That is absolutely without your own trust and without faith in yourself. Why would anybody else believe in you? You have to believe in yourself and your ability. Obviously, that means that, you know, you have to hone your skills as well and make sure that you're the best that you absolutely can be. Be original. I would absolutely say be original to your own style. Have your own style. Don't look at something and go, I can do that. Look at that and kind of go, that inspires me. I wonder if I did this slightly different. And I have to ask and maybe mm. be a bit cheeky here. How easy is that to not copy? Because look, there's always people out there doing what you do. There's certainly people in other parts of the world doing it a hell of a lot cheaper, uh, which of course is not fair and not right but as we've said we're buying Irish for shopping local how yeah. easy is it to take the inspiration and not just go oh they've done that we could do that it takes confidence in yourself to do that amazing so if you see something that you like and you're like I like that concept absolutely be inspired by the concept 
but don't say, oh, they've placed that there. I'm going to put that in the exact same space or look at that color scheme. I'm going to do that exact same thing. Be inspired, but, but don't copy because people see through that. They see that it is not yours. They see that it is not, it, it, it doesn't speak if, if it was my product, right? My products speak for me because I designed them and they're my, you know, they're, they're an extension of me. If somebody copies that, it doesn't speak for them in the same way. You can see that it's not part of their style. You can see that it's not, it's not them. So make sure that your products are speaking for yourself, that they are your product, that you have decided this is it. But that comes from trusting yourself and having confidence that you are good enough to create your own products. You do not need to copy somebody else. You need these products to speak for you. So I find that that is absolutely, that is, as a creative, that is the most important thing. Have the confidence that your products will speak for you. You don't need other people speaking for you. And so I think that's very important. Also know your market. So yeah. know who you're going to sell to. So those teacher apples right back at the beginning, I knew that I was going to go to my children's friends' mammies. And then, you know, that they was all, that was my demographic at the time. That was where I was able to find my customers because that was what I was part of at the time. So know your target and create for that target audience. And um, always staying true to yourself though, to, you know, and your own products and what you believe in. That would be like, we have the opportunity to do the likes of banners and things like that, that you would be able to use for one day and then, you know, tear down or whatever. Um, we made them for a while, but we made sure that we made them in paper. And um, so the paper was totally recyclable. And if they were only using it for one day, at least it was, you know, safe to dispose of. It wasn't a big glossy, you know, piece or the likes of our communion hoops. So <clears throat> we can make floral hoops that say Maria's communion day. Um, and we can make that and it's absolutely gorgeous and it's a beautiful keepsake. And if someone wants that, I will make it. But I, if someone contacts me, I will always suggest just do a hoop with Maria on it. Because it can be used for the communion day, but it can be used on the door or over, over your head on a bed. Or it can be taken out for every birthday or everything that happens if it just says Maria, as opposed to specifically for a day. So that's something that's important to me and the sustainability. And that's how I think when I'm developing things. And if you're a crafter and you have a specific way of thinking, then make sure that shines through on your products. I think so. that's really, it's really honorable nowadays. Again, so we talked about your values right back at the beginning of this conversation. And there you are there just layering them up. Sustainability is important, but again, you're not talking the talk. You're doing it. You're advising, you're educating your customer. You're keeping them at the heart of every decision, but you're also staying true to yourself, which is so important nowadays and we know the customer is more mindful about buying to suit their values so if you can be true to yours there's a really great match there there really is yes. yeah it's fabulous and that now that would be true to yourself That's brilliant message important. and I think again yeah. it's so important that to have that confidence at that early stage and stick to your guns as you've said really there whether that's literally growing the business with new buildings or whether that's with your product range as you've said there there's there's such important lessons but it it's an incredible journey you have been on it's a final question then and I probably know what the answer is for this as we're kind of <laughs> gearing up towards this golden quarter and dare I say it Christmas what's coming up for you and Melvin and the business over the next six months well Christmas is not a dirty word with us we make Christmas in January so don't worry you can mention it anytime with us I love it so it's great um, but for us it is Christmas is coming and we are already gearing up for our Christmas offering we have a certain amount of it on the website and yeah it's pretty much fully launched at this stage Christmas Eve boxes are I suppose an item that we would be very well known for and we would have five six different designs of those and those Christmas Eve boxes come right back to our values and the importance of tradition or the importance of sustainability and constantly having a use for products so I have Christmas Eve boxes for all of us including myself and Melvin and this is part of what we do every year and I see 
our Christmas Eve boxes, there there are some that are designed, you know, and very child centered. And then we have some that would be more classic that aren't going to age. And I genuinely see those. And I actually made one this week for a 20 year old. And the mommy came in and said, Do you know, this is for a 20 year old. And I'm like, happy days. I'm delighted. This is brilliant. This is exactly what I want. She was like, what? I said, this is part of Christmas. This is Christmas for your 20 year old. This is what she will remember. I said, by the way, the large and the extra large box bottle of wine happens to fit in them so you know like even when they're gone and married they can still fill the box with a bottle of wine they can still enjoy Christmas Eve the way that they always did as children just as adults so it isn't you know just I mean? the gimmicky thing again and she no! said that gorgeous word there tradition this is yeah. about experiences at home that you just happen to be connected with yes Absolutely. This is, these boxes will long Melvin and I and long outlive plenty of people. It is just, these are, these are core memories. These particular boxes and lots of the pieces that we make are core memories. The children will remember getting their pyjamas out of the Christmas Eve box. They will remember the hot chocolate or whatever else is in that Christmas Eve box. And they will remember the box. And every time they dust it down in the attic, they will look at it and go, oh, Christmas. Do you know, it's that's very special. So anyway, our Christmas Eve boxes are uh, part of the next six months. Our new products that are coming in. We have some beautiful pieces coming in from some other Irish suppliers. And yeah, it's Christmas and our little family reindeer that we make ourselves as well. They're they're all about it. <laughs> so Loads yeah, to be done. Loads to buy. Exciting. And I, I think that's an incredible message. And as again, very sustainable products supporting Irish supporting your values and your family's values and I love the fact as you said so we can buy online now so it's a real full-on retail buy the bits online come and visit you as well in the run-up to Christmas which is incredible it's such an amazing success story Maria it really is I, it's been a joy today it yeah. really really has so if you've listened to the podcast please please like and share today's episode remember you can also listen back to previous retail tea break podcast episodes on your favorite podcast platform or of course watch us on youtube follow myself and more importantly follow duffy and porter across their social media i'll obviously pop the website link up into the show notes and remember, you can find the show notes and the transcript from today's episode on the retailadvisor.ie. Maria, best of luck with Christmas and no doubt best of luck over the next couple of years. Who knows where Duffy and Porter will go next? Oh, it's we're been an absolute starting. pleasure today. Thank you so much. It has been a joy, an absolute joy. Thank you so much, Melissa.